On today's episode of Identity, founder of the hookup dinner, Slebu Khomlefe, hangs out in our coffee shop. He spent time with members of the internationally renowned Umoja group in Soweto, Johannesburg. What's Happening features the review of a learning app and a daily devotional book. And we play out with a song by Unati. An individual with an imagination My inner faith illuminates innovations In a space with infinite inspiration I was born free from all incarceration Incredible, living infallibly Intelligent, outshine with my inner being This is me, impeccable as ever been I am you, you are me This is my identity Good morning and welcome to the Multi-Faith Youth Show that aims to add a dash of spiritual swag to your week. This is Identity and I'm your host, Viewer Kuala. The festive season may be in full swing, but you can rest assured that the Identity team is still intent on keeping you inspired, uplifted and entertained throughout the holiday season. Today's episode is sure to do just that. We kick off today's throwback episode with a conversation I had with entrepreneur and founder of The Hookup Dinner, Slebo Khomulefe. This is how our chat went down. It's been said that necessity is the mother of invention, and I'm sure the young man joining me today will agree. Frustrated by the lack of proper networking opportunities around him, he decided to pioneer a movement that would give up-and-coming entrepreneurs a platform to network and contribute to each other's success. That's when the hookup dinner was born. Slebu Khomulefe is also the CEO of Life's Good Global Investments, a brand ambassador for the Branson Center South Africa, as well as White Ribbon South Africa. But that's not all. He also sits on the board of the House Group, a center for abused and destitute young girls. How does he do it all? Well, he's here today to tell me all about it. Slebu welcome to Identity. Thank you. Thank you so much. So before we get into your present life and your present work, please tell me about your upbringing. Oh. I'm born to a pastor okay. and a nurse. Pastor's child. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I hope I didn't turn out the way that is normally predicted with those. Mm-hmm. Um, I come from Swaziland. Okay. I grew up in Swaziland with my grandmother for about four years and then came to South Africa in 1989 to come and live with my parents full time. Mm-hmm. And that was in Hilbro. So from about 1990 to about 2000, I lived in Hilbro, grew up in that environment, um, went to JP Boys High. Um, concrete jungle. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting environment. Mm-hmm. But I enjoyed it. Yeah. Slipho, I know you're very open to come when it comes to spirituality. Yeah. What role does spirituality play in your life right now? It has given me balance. Um, as much as I'm not a religious person per se in, in the deep sense of it, I, because of my upbringing, I've been influenced a lot by the scripture. Um, I'm a church boy for life. Um, and that's what I thank my dad for, for his strict upbringing. Um, for me, it, it gives me balance between the hectic lifestyle that I lead, I lead and as well as um, the, the work and the family life that, that, that I have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which leads me to my next question. Mm. Life's Good Global Investments. Yeah. What a name to name an organization. Yeah. Why that particular name and uh, what's the aim of the organization? Look, I grew up without having access to a lot of things. I wasn't one of the cool kids. Um, so I was on the rebel side of life. Uh, I was always trying to prove a point mm. and I was always trying to fit in. And I realized at some point that it just, just wasn't working out. Mm. So when it came to providing solutions for people, I wanted to provide solutions that uh, were catering to my problems initially. Um, I had issues of being shy um, and all sorts of things. Um, mm. I was a misfit in, in, in most ways. And in about 2000 to 2004, I ran a few startups and that culminated into Life's Good. Okay. And for me, Life's Good is about when I got out of the Bronx, which is Hillbro, and moved into the northern suburbs. Um, it, was, it was always a wish that now having moved out of a bachelor flat, the way we all lived <laughs> as a family of five, yeah. I, was the, I was the last to sleep because I had to sleep by the door. So when I moved into the northern suburbs, it, 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 was, um, it was about the good life. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to provide an environment that uh, provided inspiration to my friends mm-hmm. as well as my peers. And that's where Life's Good was, was born from. Um, the, just the, the, the terminology around the good life. Um, I had a housemate who was all, all, all about the good life. Mm-hmm. And the more she said that, it was more like, why don't I just name my company Life's Good? And that's what, that was back in 2004 when I founded the company. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
So the interesting thing that you spoke about, Guti, as Impileako was, you know, culminated with a lot of things going on. Yeah. And as a successful businessman, I'm sure that Namanj, you don't have time to yourselves, let, let alone, you know, Wutuniga Omunumundu is cut. So why are you so passionate about giving back, especially to people who want to get into business? I think it's about an obsession with solving problems that you have, uh, have come across yourself. Um, mm -hmm. For me, I tried for the longest time to get access to things like finance, um, networks especially. Um, like I said, I wasn't part of the cool club and as a result, all the time when you try and get in, they shut you out. So I decided, let me try and do my own thing my way and ever since I got obsessed with that, it has just brought about a passion that I do not even understand. I, I, I cannot say I fully comprehend it as to why I do certain things, but I'm, I'm grateful for it. And I think a lot of the influence also comes from the church that I, that I go to. Um, our pastor has got a very strong love and deep uh, passion for people and uh, helping them to grow. So that, that, has got a, that has had a lot of influence in my life and I, I try and emulate that and, and, I, and I try and live my own life to, to, to the best possible that I can. Um, okay, yeah. so is this how the hookup dinner came about? Please tell us about it. I was actually sitting with my uh, girlfriend, who's, my, who's now my wife. This was back in 2012. Mm -hmm. um, we had just come out of a, a series of events that we were doing. We used to call them the Sex and Intimacy Dialogues. And it was about bringing couples together and okay. helping them to explore each other. And post that, um, there was just this period of not having a network where we could vent out, um, where, we, where, where other people like me we were going through similar frustrations around business. And we're sitting there in a coffee shop one day, we're like, how cool would it be if uh, at the end of the month we hosted something for a few of our friends? And it wasn't even about entrepreneurship. And I was like, okay, let's hook up. Called a couple of friends. The first hookup dinner, there were um, 10 people there. Mm -hmm. And we're just chilling around the table and we're having drinks and we're openly engaging in conversation without having that mask on. Like if I'm to ask you, how are you doing? Mm -hmm. You're not gonna say, I'm great, yeah, you know? Yeah, or yeah. do you have money or, you know? Mm -hmm. Like we could be real with each other. And I realized that there was something special that was coming out of that. And mm -hmm. it was a no-brain after that, the spark bit. And I was like, uh, next month, we, we're hooking up again. And word just spread virally. And I think it was because there's an actual need for it. There's a problem out there where people are struggling um, with just a sense of connecting. Mm -hmm. we, we, we are so busy with our lives that we don't have the time to just stop mm -hmm. and reflect. And that's what I wanted to bring about for, for the hookup dinner. It was to create a community of misfits, people that are misunderstood, but when they get together, they create magic. And three years later, we're seeing magic. How important are events and opportunities such as the hookup dinner for a person, say, like me, who wants to venture into business, for an example? How important is it for me to expose myself to events such as the hookup dinner? You see, the thing is, it's not even about events. Oh, okay. It's about community. Mm -hmm. um, think about church. We go to church every Sunday, mm -hmm. and the message keeps changing, and it touches us in a particular way, depending on, on what we believe in. And if you think about that, <laughs> you've, you've got an institution mm -hmm. that where you go and refill every week. Mm -hmm. So for us, the hookup dinner symbolizes that. It's about entrepreneurs once a month getting together, um, just reflecting, connecting, sharing information, sharing ideas, and potentially collaborating and doing great things together. And as a result of that, I did not set out to do an event. I am not uh, focused on the eventing part of things. I'm more focused on the community building. Mm -hmm. The moment you've got a, an, a, a, a community of like-minded people that are doing things um, that, that, that they can resonate with, then you've got magic. You don't have to do anything else. People just come out and do their thing. You have a favorite scripture that you like, you know. Please tell us what it is and what it means to you personally. I live by Luke 1 verse 37. It says, for with God all things are possible. Um, it's been like that for most of my life. It's been like that for my family. Um, having come out of poverty, my, my family came out of a, a very, very, very dire, dire background. Mm -hmm. And having seen how my mom and dad persevered and having come across a, f a few challenges and how they've overcome those, mm -hmm. um, it, it, it was only natural that it, it would spark something in, in, in me uh, as well as in my siblings and, and in my family. And mm -hmm. it's, it, it's, it's something that always reminds me, even when you're going through those dark tunnels, that God, all things are possible. So it gives me a sense of believing. Um, as long as I can believe, uh, everything else is cool. So Slebu Kholaika, we've got a quick word game. We need to answer as quickly as possible. And the game is called Choose My Care Taylor. So it's either you choose one or the other. Are you ready? Okay. All right. The first question, shark cage diving or bungee jumping? Bungee jumping. Summer or winter? Summer. 
Steak or burger? Steak. Sneakers or cowboy boots? Sneakers. <laughs> Walkie talkie or megaphone? Walkie talkie. <laughs> Coffee or tea? Coffee. Snail mail or pigeon mail? Mm. Pigeon mail. <laughs> so, Mukha, thank you so much for joining us on Identity. You're such an inspiration. Oh, thank you. Dependent on the nature of the body, the body is not the same. 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 The body is not the It's time for a short break. When we come back, we get musical with the internationally renowned group Umoja. And stay tuned for today's media review segment, which features a learning guidance app and a devotional book by Oswald Chambers. See you in a moment. This is my identity. This is my identity. Namkelekile kwa khona kwi identity khona apha kumzansi for sure. Dinguviwe qwala inkosi ngokuhlala nathi. Sangamakhulukhulu eminyaka imvela phethi ibiyozelwa kusizukulwana nesizukulwana ngamabali nomculo. Namhlanje sijonga ibandla eliphume emagqabini ngamandla lokubalisa amabali ngomculo kwaye elibandla silikhelele phesheya. Sichithe iqesha namalungu we umoja apho bebezilungiselela esowethe egautini masibone ibali labo. This is my identity. Giving clothes, money and food is not the only method of giving back to the community. Todd Twala and Tembi Nyandeni thought of a different way to give back to their community in a way that embraces our culture as Africans. And the concept was Africa Umoja, created to keep underprivileged youth off the streets and give them a chance to live a dream. Umoja started as an outreach program in 1983. Sino Tembi Mesbuya Peshea, America from a very long tour whilst we're still dancers. And then when Masibu ya laika ya sinu tembi sa tolo guti izi nito bezi nga kwa zi nte, nga kwa mnandi. Tola bantu wa nabanengi, betele makoneni, besnifi klu, belele mahil pro. That was 1983, 820. Ene lewa zangi zi nkhalega, njongo mama, ene njongo South African, nga basa kuli so guti, masi ya bantu fine this pegelan. E drive, yu guti sikale le project no tembi. Uguti sabona, uguti... Empathy in way to last cool corner. Abantuana Baning, Abasuelayo, Begunanam to Basizayo. So, what I eat drive is push I not tell you as a season, Lababanga season. This dream has become a reality for many of the Africa Umoja cast members over the years through God who carried them until now. My spiritual guidance is the most powerful pillar of this project. Because ngapande kunkulunkulu angkolo kuti ngabe sifike la sifike kona. Because ngapande kwa manda engwa istrenta ngi strowa kunkulunkulu on daily basis to make this show this project continues. I mean, ama project ama nini? Apelele ndilin. Why ene ngi labo ababe kunkulunkulu pambili? So lagwa mocha mbege mina unkulunkulu pambili because ngamfundi swa from ek haya. I'm spiritually connected to God. I know him. I believe in him so much that he's done amazing things for me and I appreciate it so much each and every single day. In fact, I, I just thank him for everything that he's ever done for me now, that he's still doing for me now. And I know there's still a whole lot of things, greater pastures, a whole lot of things are waiting for me now. And, um, I'm, I'm, I'm so deep, it's so deep, it's not even funny. Like I could sit by myself and Think, think to myself, Obuti, how, how amazing I am, how amazing I am as an individual, and what amazing things I've received a life in. Mamba fundi salabantuana, mungkulungkul nali tradition yetu, yes, into. It is because yonke lama gifts abanao, wonke la manja abanao, lom zimba abanao, lom perfumlo abanao, abakonu wenza lam, lama dances na gonke abanao, kubuya guban, kubuya mungkulungkul. Patalo unkulu kulu labantu. Nala ma gifts. 
I didn't give them a gift. I'm not paying them a gift. Oh, I'm enjoying my groom. I'm a gift. I'm also cool. I'm a groom. I'm jealous. Voice good. This is how you use your voice. We say in Sagangi voice. It's fundo. Abas abantu abas tola yo. Abas abas obugelo moja ngo moja. Si kulu ga kulu because. Bafunda ngo gutu umnyo zikuetu usuga pi uguze gube nekaito na mshange si kale gupi si kale ne si kisi kita ama drums injam kusinwa imichibo uguchinwa gonge si kale lab marumba isinto zaya ngo guya i evolution umnyo zikuetu atata wa evolve. Into the young shinch as Iminyagi Hamba. So Bafunda Kakulu Gabanzi, no music was South Africa, good. O develop, o evolve, and I know the figure of Conan and Shad. I feel that, well, knowing your culture is very important for an individual, Nje, whether or Pumapi in the world, it's very important. I mean, uh, you should know where you come from. Those are your roots. You should embrace your culture. I'm, I'm Tonga. No man yinga belong to that certain tribe, but I'm getting to embrace them. And by doing so, I, I'm still educating Abanyabantu. We're doing what we call Umzanzi. So, as you know, Uti Umzanzi is a very energetic uh, dance, and it tells Different stories. We understand. Even more jargon go my CBs and go to Kalantom Bank. So basically, it's a guy pleading to Intombozan or Shell. So as you know, we see Abantu, our Miyama, this card, so we see Amantombozan, I've been a Kunshell and Jenga Majela, we see Shell Stratin or Ganjan, the Kronish. Before Siba Fundisa, Mukdans and Angukul, fans Bafundis and Envela Pizabo. To start with, Abantana Baning Lawa Moja. Aba Velugi Lona A one. We we in in one tradition in one cultural uh, what you call tribe. So Sikala like Allah Conalent to Sba Fundise, Sba Kumbuze and Ubud Baobani. And they must embrace Ubuntu Babo Kala. In Tesem Koga in Kronip. That's part of our heritage. Intonipo. And intonipo into em nanding ayo is ikona nyse pipilini. Bese guza ge in uguzi pata. Sba fundisana uguzi pata. Ma win ma umfana u in tombazan. This is how you conduct yourself. Uz pate ga at ma umut. So that nensu guza ko zizo waz guan dezwe. This is my identity. It's time for another short break, but don't go away because when we come back, we head straight into today's media review segment, which features an app that will give you practical tips on how to enhance your learning skills, as well as a daily devotional book to help keep you spiritually uplifted throughout the new year. We'll be right back. This is my identity. This is my identity. You're still watching Identity Mzansi's favorite multi-faith youth show right here on SAPC One Mzansi for sure. I'm your host, Viva Kuala. If you've just tuned in, here's what you missed out on. Founder of The Hookup Dinner, Slebu Khomulefe, got today's throwback episode off on an uplifted note. We then took a short left to Soweto in Johannesburg to spend a day with members of the critically acclaimed musical group Umoja. Now it's time to take a look at what's trending on the media front. Let's check out what's happening. The start of the new year usually means you're taking a level up in your learning. Why not start the new school year armed with skills to help you improve your practical thinking and information retention skills? Here's an app to help you do just that. It's called the Illumin Training Guide to Learning. Take a look. The Illumin Training Guide to Learning is an app that was created as a skills and personal development tool. The app features three tabs, namely home, techniques and brain resources. The Home tab features links to brain development resources such as Attitude Mindset, 
mind mapping, speed reading, and improved memory. Select your preferred option and read up on information that's designed to give your brain the boost it needs. Select the Fit for Learning option to learn about how your food and liquid intake affect your mental and physical performance, as well as the health benefits that the listed foods provide. The Attitude Mindset option will help you understand how your mental and emotional state influences your learning. Click on the Environment tab for tips on how to create an environment that is conducive to effective learning. Learn more about mind maps, their benefits, and how to use them by selecting the Mind Mapping tab. If you're looking to improve your reading speed and retention skills, simply click on the Speed Reading tab. Want to improve your memory? Then read through the hints and tips featured under the Improve Your Memory option. For quick links to the different learning techniques that the app features, select the Techniques tab. And for resources to help you apply the knowledge gained from using the app, select the Brain Resources tab. Improve your personal and management skills with the help of the Illumin Training Guide to Learning app. I'm pretty sure this app will come in handy not just for those at school or tertiary, but for everyone across all levels of life. Now on to our next review. It's a classic devotional that is still as relevant today as it was when it was first published. It's a book called My Utmost for His Highest by Oswald Chambers. Let's page two. My Utmost for His Highest is a timeless daily devotional made up of transcripts from talks given by Christian minister Oswald Chambers during his Bible college years. The book offers 365 short devotional chapters based on biblical teachings with one chapter for each day of the year. Each chapter begins with an apt and topic-related quote from the Bible. In the book, Oswald touches on interesting and pertinent issues such as Are you exhausted spiritually? Heartiness versus heartlessness towards others the light that never fails, think as Jesus taught, and faith among others. For an alphabetic listing of the subjects covered, flip to the back of the book and go through the index of subjects. Here you can also find an index of biblical references. Enrich your spiritual life with the help of My Utmost for His Highest by Oswald Chambers. With that hearty dose of spiritual infotainment, we've come to the end of today's throwback episode. Let us know your thoughts on today's show by sending an email to identitytvshow at gmail.com. You can also interact with us on our social media profiles. Search for Identity TV Show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I'm going to tell you how many people are going to be here. I'm going to tell you how many people are going to be here. I'm going to tell you how many people are going to be here. I'm going to Deus